Let's have a little chat today about being a realtor and a mom. Dads, y'all are welcome to listen to. And some of y'all are married real estate couples. And this is a conversation that we just don't have enough. There's a question I'm often asked about this whole balance. How do you get work-life balance? Well, first of all, y'all, that's a myth. It doesn't exist. All I can tell you is that there is a goal of work-life management. Why do I say management instead of balance? Well, balance means there's going to be equal everything. And frankly, this is life. Life does not have equal anything. And you know this because you have kids in the backseat of your car too, fighting over sharing something or fighting over whose line it is in the backseat that somebody else was breathing over. Let it go and think instead about some tools that you can put in place that will allow you to make real estate a manageable career. The first thing I'll tell you is that you need reminders around you of why you're doing what you're doing. I keep mine here. That's my Cora and that's my Tim. And that's my husband too. So he's in the middle. I call him my first husband because he is and he hates that joke. I think it's hilarious, but I keep my kids around my office because first of all, you can get completely absorbed by real estate. And by absorbed, I mean, you think you have to be on your phone 24 seven. You think that every text is absolutely critical. And you frankly think the world is going to burn down if you are not there all the time. Well, the world that's actually gonna burn down if you're not there is this one. Your kids need you present. And the ways that you can be present are myriad. That's where technology is your friend, as long as you control it and don't let it control you. So tip number one, have pictures of your family around your office. Now here's tip number two, keep walkie talkies in your office. And yes, this is something y'all never knew about Lee Brown before. There are walkie talkies in my office and there have been for years so that when my kids are on site in my real estate space, I can buzz them and find them because for whatever reason, they sometimes ignore my texts on their cell phones, right? But they can't ignore the walkie talkie going. And we've had these for years. If I've taken the kids with me on a property showing, I can then buzz them if they're walking around the backyard because we do have some boundaries when we're doing real estate and clients are around. But I've got to know that my kids are somewhere where I can find them as well. Seems small, small investment a great way to have a conversation in your office while your kids are somewhere else in your office building. Now, tip number three has to do with those boundaries. If my kids are going to be involved in a conversation that I'm having with a client, now, honestly, this is less of an issue now that I have teenagers, but when they were littles, I always wanted to make sure that I was not abandoning the mom side of me, but also being an excellent realtor in the realtor side of me. Ask permission. The boundaries in your business can absolutely exist, but it's even better when you allow your clients to be a part of the process. I had a lot of clients I'd call and say, hey, I've got a kid this afternoon for whatever reason. Is it okay if they're with me? Every single time my client said yes. Now my kids knew that they were under some very specific strict guidelines about be quiet, be unobtrusive. If you're asked a question, be respectful and kind and respond. And I will tell you, There's a couple of my clients that will tell you my children helped them pick their house because they were torn between two and they wanted an opinion. And my Tim is very good at selecting your house. And they love that we have a story together. It's just how you handle things, y'all. And frankly, that's life, right? The kids don't get to run everything, but they can be included. And they can also see that they have a professional parent. So they learn how to respect people. They should learn how to shake hands. My kids did great in junior achievement because they knew how to shake a hand correctly, not a dead fish and not trying to break the bones in somebody's hand. Teach them that. Teach your kids how to make eye contact. In fact, you'll notice that these are actually great life skills. So if you want to achieve parent balance and realtor balance at the same time, Why not teach your kids how to be decent adults in the world so that they can grow into this space? And you know that children learn what they see. They learn what you live. And so you want to show them and tell them at the same time. And then your clients get to be a part of that as well. And frankly, so do their kids because some of our clients bring kids along on the opportunities as well. Now, this goes for listings as well. I will tell you one of my most heartwarming moments ever was last year. I went to a house to sell it for some folks who were ready to downsize because the wife had advanced dementia and the husband could no longer handle things by himself. So they were moving to be closer to their daughter 
who I'd happened to know for many, many decades. Well, I took my daughter with me. And while I was working with the daughter and we were sitting with the mother who didn't really know what was going on, the dad was just overcome with emotion of leaving their lifelong house until my daughter sat in the floor with him and went through the record albums. And they discussed music that they shared a like for in common. And he gave her at least 20 vinyl albums to carry home with her. And that actually allowed him to separate from the house and know that the legacy wasn't ending just because the address was changing. And it allowed my friend from forever to also see that it was going to be okay. You think about that, your family life, your kids, your balance as a parent might make you a better realtor. But it's all about the conversation of, is it okay if I bring my kids along and thinking about how they're going to interact in a way that's helpful. Now, the other tool you're going to have to have, back to having some boundaries and some management, you're going to have to have a calendar. And I don't mean a Google calendar that's going to buzz at you all the time because technology is not always our friend because it makes us twitch. I mean like a real written calendar. I love my written calendar. I'm a kinesthetic learner, which means I absorb things when I write them down. So this calendar is where I keep my big rocks. And you've probably read about big rocks. There's tons of business books about it. What has to get done? Well, I will tell y'all last night, my big rock was my son's high school band concert. I'm not missing a band concert. And it was very good, by the way. They're not all dreadful. And I made sure that was number one in my calendar. And I filled everything else around it. My daughter has final exams this week. And so I've got a big rock at the end of the day so that I can help her decompress from the exams and prep for the next day because that matters. Work will land around it if you allow it to, but it's about you taking control of that space. And for those of y'all that have messaged me and said, I do not have room for failure, good. Life doesn't have room for failure either. And I didn't write failure in my calendar. You know what I wrote in my calendar? Things I'm going to get done. And what happens is when you write it down, it's going to be achievable. And then there's this even more magical part that will help you focus because we need some focus. Go backwards and look what you got done earlier. I could look back at July and say, oh, got that done, got that done, got that done. And so if today I feel like I did not do enough, I don't have to go very far back to see that I've actually gotten a lot done as an entrepreneurial mom. Now, when you think about the other challenges in real estate, we do work a lot of evenings. We work a lot of weekends because realtors work when the rest of the world is out of their day-to-day -day job. Well, where you balance that is by filling in your downtime in other spaces so maybe you take Wednesday off instead of Saturday. It's possible. It's all about how you make the decisions and what you do in your calendar to block it out. And then you got to honor the blocks. This is a very important tip for you. A lot of you have this time built in and you know what you do. You say, you know what? I'll get around to it later. No, if it says you're blocked, you're blocked. And by the way, there is a tendency in sales for salespeople to tell the world, oh, I've I've got a client when in reality you had a band concert too. Transparency and honesty are a heck of a lot more effective than even little white lies. So tell your client, my son has a band concert and I've got to be off the phone by 610. They will honor that, I promise you. I've learned this the hard way. In my years in real estate, I use those little obscure things at the beginning and people want to squeeze into your space. But then when you tell them the truth, you'll find out that in their life, they have times they'd like to honor as well. And frankly, our whole society will get better if we honor each other. So that's a few tips for you on managing life as a realtor and life as a parent. I'm going to give you that permission to go after management instead of balance. And if you ever need a friend who's been in those trenches with you and has struggled, but has figured out how to look backwards for the wins and forward for the next goal, you message me anytime. You subscribe to this channel right now. You leave me a comment right now. And you know that this girl in North Carolina is cheering for you. I'll see you next time.